think five people that inspire you. And if you've got a pen and a bit of paper, I'd like if you just take a moment and write down on the piece of paper five people that inspire. Now, inspire to me is a couple of things. One, when you're with this person, when you think about this person, when you just remember this person, you see more clearly what is important. When you're with this person, when you think about this person, you find more energy to do the things that are important. You find more energy for the day. So write down five names, people that inspire you. On your list of five inspiring people, I'd just like you to write next to each one. What's the characteristic of that person that makes them so inspiring? So just look at each name and put, what's the ingredient that if you took away from that person, it would take away their power as a, as a source of inspiration? So I just want to write down five names and to the right of those names, what characteristic of them makes them an inspiration? After working with 44,000 leaders over the last 16 years, I can tell you some of the key ones, but there's a book called The Leadership Challenge by Kauses and Postner. And actually, if you go to Amazon, this is a bit of subversion for all of you. If you go to amazon.com and you look for the book, The Leadership Challenge, there's the option to look inside you, know, you click on it, you can read it there. You can read all the good parts of this book without actually having to buy it. So a, a bit of practice subversion this tonight is go to Amazon, the Leadership Challenge, Kauses and Postner, and they, over 30 years, have asked a question to millions and millions of employees in the corporate world. What are the characteristics of an immediate supervisor that gets the greatest discretionary effort out of you. Millions and millions of responses. And it's kind of a similar question to, what are the characteristics of inspiration? What does a person need to have, be, or do in order to cause an impact in others that they are better in your presence? And they have four, the top four characteristics of what it takes that when you are present, those around you decide to give more. Number two, the second most important characteristic of these people that get discretionary effort out of those around them, number two is competence. The proxy for competence, books on your table. Are there books on your table? If there are books on your table, it's probable that you are learning, you are studying, you care about learning. They say the difference between parents that contribute to their kids' development and parents that are a non-positive source for their kids' development is whether you have ever bought a book on parenting. It doesn't matter if you've read it. <laughs> if you care enough to spend $12.99 on a book, you have everything you need to be a good parent. If you care. So competence, it's not that you know all the answers. It's you show others that it's important to you to be competent today, but competent also for tomorrow. So the second is competence, with the measurement being there are books on your table. Others see that there are books around you. Number three, the third characteristic, what they call forward-looking. And forward-looking is not that you have a 10-year vision of where you'd like to get to 10 years from now. Forward-looking is about the instant that someone says to you, we have a problem. If in the instant that someone says to you, we have a problem, your face goes into panic and you ask, who screwed up? This is backwards-looking. <laughs> seeking for problems, seeking for the fault, seeking how we got here forward-looking, in the moment that someone says to you, we have a problem, your first interest is, are you okay? Do we know where we stand? Who else needs to be informed? What resources can we get to you to make this right? What else needs to happen? Then after two minutes of that, you get a free go at, and I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> 
So when your kid comes and says, I failed maths, you need to practice that your facial expression stay strong. You go, are you OK? <laughs> what are you taking from this experience? And then after two minutes of that, you get to go, I knew the PlayStation 4 should have been back in the drawer on Sunday. So forward looking is your immediate reaction when somebody around you says that there's a problem. Your face, your gestures, what you ask. Do people know that if they bring you a problem, the first thing you're going to be is a source of help, a source of helping them resolve it. Also, empathy in seeing that they facing this problem are going to grow. They facing this problem are going to become a stronger, better person. It's the problems in our lives that make us grow. And great leaders love seeing people face problems, love seeing a really good teacher face a kid that is hell in the classroom. Because at the end of this year, she or he will have developed skills that they didn't have. And next year, they're going to be better. It's the problems that make us grow as people. So if you've got competence, number two, if you've got this ability that when someone brings a problem, your reaction is, are you OK? Do we know where we stand? What, who else needs to be brought in? Number four, inspiring which is measured by coherence between what you say you value and your life. Do you know how a child spells love? T-I-M-E. I meet hundreds and hundreds of corporate leaders. I ask them this question. Put these three in the order of importance. Work, partner, kids. Initially, they resist writing it down, but when they see there's no escape, they put them in the order they would like them to be. I then ask them, would your partner agree? There's a movement of discomfort. <laughs> so inspiring, to me, Azar is inspiring. Azar is inspiring because it looks like she loves her life. It looks like she's chosen. It looks like... She's faced problems that she would not wish on anyone. She's had to move thousands of miles away from where she grew up. But she looks like she would choose to be herself. I often say to people that the greatest movie for learning about how to lead and how to be a good human being, Kung Fu Panda 2. <laughs> so maybe on the trip back home, if you haven't got clear, Kung Fu Panda 2 at the beginning of the movie, Po, the panda, the dragon warrior, he is the son of a duck who makes noodles in a little cheap noodle shop. And he believes this is beneath the dragon warrior. The dragon warrior could not be the son of a duck, could not be from a noodle shop. The very end of Kung Fu Panda 2, after two hours of movie going joy, Po, the panda, steps into this shop and he says, Dad, I know who I am. The duck says, who are you? Poe says, I am your son, and I like noodles. So this fourth element, inspiring, is that your life day after day gets closer and closer to what you say your values are, where you spend your money, where you spend your time, where you dedicate your effort, the people that you have around you, more and more are things that you have chosen. And sometimes even the things that you didn't choose, you decide to choose to own them. So this fourth element is coherence between who you want to be and who you're trying to become and the journey. But the number one, the single most important characteristic, the characteristic that gets the greatest discretionary effort out of everyone around you, number one, Honesty. And it's worth, you know, I know you want to do the subversive thing of doing the look inside, but it's worth reading what they describe honesty to be. Because honesty, as described in the book, The Leadership Challenge, is not that you just tell the whole truth and, anything, and nothing but the truth every time to all people. Honesty is that you recognize that you play multiple roles in life. And you might be the director of a school but you're also a person. 
And you, one of the ways that we work to develop this capacity of honesty is stopping people believing that they are the uniform, they are who they are. When I started teaching, I tried to teach the way a good professor at a business school would teach. If there was a problem with a student, my mind was thinking, what would a good ESA business school professor do in response to this engagement? When someone asked me what we were doing tomorrow, I would think, how would a good business school professor answer? And any time you're trying to be someone else, you're not being honest. And the other can tell, and you can't tell. So honesty is becoming like Poe, accepting that you are who you are, and all you can do is what you can do. But you play a role. And in this role, you might be the director of a school, and you can say, we have bad news. In order to implement next year's curriculum, I need to cancel all summer holiday for everyone. This has been decided across the school. It's been discussed with everyone. We've looked at 100 different options, but it's been taken as a school-wide decision. You know, as Connor, I know you've got a young family. I know that this summer was important to you, that you've got a couple of things that you're really looking forward to. As your leader, I have to tell you, this applies to everyone. As Connor, we're going to do everything we can in the team to make sure that we can get this to work for you. But don't tell the others. So this is so extra subversion, subversion bonus edition. But you know, here, honesty is that they deal with a human being. If they believe that you, a school director, are taking decisions like a good school director, you'll get no discretionary effort out of people around you because there's nothing to trust. There's no relationship being built. It's only where there's a little bit of humanity being connected. When Azar talked about bringing the seven students into her home, I was thinking, would I bring students into my home? Would I see that as part of my job? Would I want that level of connection? And I guess, we all need to come to terms of what would I do? Not what would I do because I want to be a copy of Azar because I was inspired by that idea and I'd like to be able to talk here about seven students and where their lives have gone 10 years after. <laughs> what would I do, Connor? What would each of you do as a person? What's your role as a teacher? What's your role as a leader of teachers? What's your role here in gathering knowledge and bringing it back? And what's your role as yourself? And honesty is about never losing yourself behind this cover. Now, I've had a really good time listening to Azar. It's been a real pleasure sharing this with you. And we're now going to hear from someone who really knows about leadership. So I would like to just thank you for being here with me. Those inspiring people, let them know they've made a difference in your life. I wrote a letter last year to Eric Matz to let him know how much he changed my life. I hope you let those people who've inspired you know how important they are to you. Thank you very much.